The death of Martha Heyer dealt a big blow and is one of the biggest losses for the film industry in recent times. The talented actress took her last breath on the 31st of May in the year 2014 at the age of 89. Prior to that, she had a glamorous and successful career where she essayed several roles to perfection and made a name for herself in the world of movies. So in this video, we'll be going back in time to look at some interesting facts about American-born actress Martha Heyer. But before we begin, don't forget to watch it to the end, share with your friends, and smash the subscribe button for more interesting videos. Early Life Martha Heyer was born on August 10, 1924, as one of three daughters of Agnes Nee Barnhart and Julian Capers Heyer in Fort Worth, Texas, where she finished her formal schooling. Her father was a judge, who later took part in the trials at Nuremberg after the Second World War. The Heyers were active in the Methodist Church, where her father was a highly respected Sunday school teacher. Heyer graduated from Arlington Heights High School and then from Northwestern University with a degree in drama. She was discovered by a Hollywood talent agent. She enrolled in the Pasadena Playhouse in California, where she was spotted by a Hollywood talent agent. Despite the fact that she was playing a bearded elder in a Greek tragedy, soon she was under contract to RKO during the war years, appearing in several B-Westerns. I was little Nell in lots of those, she wrote. For several years, Heyer was unable to get a secured toehold in Hollywood. Although, she worked in everything from Abbott and Costello Go to Mars to the bee adventure Yukon Gold and the African safari film The Scarlet Spear. The Big Break Heyer's first big break came when she was cast as William Holden's fiancé in Billy Wilder's 1954 romantic comedy Sabrina which starred Audrey Hepburn and Humphrey Bogart. In her autobiography, she recalled Bogart as being helpful and selfless in his scenes with her. But in suing roles in pictures like Red Sundown opposite Rory Calhoun and Francis in the Navy opposite Donald O'Connor and a talking mule, again stalled Heyer's career. She worked with Rock Hudson, whom she said was shallow and self-centered, in 1956's Battle Him. In quick succession, she found herself playing the straight woman to the likes of David Niven, Bob Hope, and Jerry Lewis in films that spotlighted their characters and not hers. Career Slowly, Martha began picking up roles with more and more substance, with her best years as an actress beginning in 1954, where she played in films such as Down Three Dark Streets in 1954, Showdown at Abilene in 1956, and Battle Him in 1957. Perhaps the best role of her long career was as Gwen French in 1958's Some Came Running, in which she played opposite Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Shirley MacLaine. As a result of her stellar role, Martha received an Academy Award nomination as Best Supporting Actress, but she lost out to Wendy Hiller in Separate Tables in 1958. She lost a role to Janet Leigh. In the following years, the elegant hire was seen in a number of soapy sagas, such as The Best of Everything in 1959, Ice Palace in 1960, and The Carpetbaggers in 1964, hardly ever loosening her hairpins. She was the epitome of Alfred Hitchcock's cool blonde, who just lost out to Janet Lee for the role of Marion Crane in Psycho in 1960. If only she had got the part, she might have avoided playing the roles in Bikini Beach in 1964 and Pyro also in 1964, in which she is a jealous mistress who starts a fire that kills her lover's wife, and Picture Mommy Dead in 1966, in which she is a wicked stepmother. She had a chance to play a goodie in First Men in the Moon in 1964, loosely based on H.G. Wells, in which Hire and two male companions soar to the moon from Victorian England in a spherical capsule propelled by an anti-gravity element cooked up in the professor's country lab. She had no children. Shortly after she signed a film contract with RKO, she got married twice, first to producer C. Ray Stahl and later to producer Hal B. Wallace. She converted to Judaism, Wallace's religion, after their marriage. Wallace and Heyer remained together until his death in 1986. 
Hire and Wallace contributed funds towards the construction of the Hal and Martha Hire Wallace Theater, a black box theater at Northwestern University. Wallace died in 1986, and Hire moved to Santa Fe shortly thereafter. This country casts a spell and it's never let go, she wrote. Caught in the game. By her own admission, Heyer became caught up in the high living culture of the Hollywood lifestyle and began overspending. Shortly after she penned a first-person account of her lifestyle in a 1959 Life magazine article, she came home to find her Hollywood home robbed of all its goods. She later managed to pay ransom to get some of her paintings back, but the worst was yet to come. She went bankrupt. By the early 1980s, Heyer was in debt to loan sharks to the tune of several million dollars. With her career behind her, her last film roles were in the early 1970s, she turned to God for help and found immediate solace and peace. In her memoir, she wrote, God poured through me. Shortly thereafter, Wallace, as well as some lawyers and the FBI, helped Heyer work her way out of her financial mess. Heyer became somewhat of a recluse in her later days, preferring to paint, hike, and spend time with close friends. When you live with fame as a day-to-day -day reality, the allure of privacy and anonymity is as strong as the desire for fame for those who've never had it, she said. Final Days Heyer enjoyed a quiet retirement through the 1980s and 1990s. She was best remembered for her role as Gwen French in Some Came Running in 1958, for which she was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Her final film role was in The Day of the Wolves in 1971, and her final television role was in a 1974 episode of McCloud. She died on May 31, 2014 at the age of 89 from natural causes in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where she had lived for many years. Though Martha left the silver screen in the 80s, take a look at these glamorous photos to see the beauty of this blonde bombshell in the 1950s and 60s. Which of those pics caught your interest the most? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more interesting videos. Thank <laughs> you.